Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about a hot topic that I keep hearing pop up in the technical as well as data communities. And it's something that you might already have at your organization and maybe you're not utilizing or maybe it's something that is totally novel to you. But what I can say is from personal experience in Knowledge Graph and very specifically the machine learning space, this kind of role or skill set is incredibly helpful. I honestly don't know how these projects that I was working on would have succeeded without this kind of person being involved. So today we are joined by a special guest who also has a fabulous podcast also on data topics. If you want to find out more about that, all the links are down below. So if you are interested in this and finding out what does the skills that enroll do, make sure you stick around. Thank you for having me on, on your channel. Um, my name is Loris, uh, Loris Morini. I am the host and producer of the Discovering Data podcast. Um, uh, my journey in data started a cup, well, now it's five, damn it, time flies, <laughs> five years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, five years ago, that was after a, a bit of research at uni, I started laser physics and quantum physics and there's like many physicists that ended up being... <laughs> yeah it was, it, was, it was look it was shiny and it was, it was interesting <laughs> so I, I said yeah why not uh, it took me four years uh, lots and lots of funds i broke many samples <laughs> high power lasers tend to do that but like many physicists i ended up uh, being hired by a startup in uh, sydney um and uh yeah i was sort of that first data hire so first data scientist that is trying to do data science but it doesn't really know uh, <laughs> what it takes to do this data, data yeah. science well it was back in 2018 welcome, yeah where, welcome to being a data scientist right? exactly yes yeah. so now i feel like with a lot of education um a lot a lot of creators are trying to raise the bar when it comes to expectations and i see things changing but back in 2018 uh, the CEO was like, yeah, everybody's hiring data scientists. We should definitely hire should one. one. Um, and I remember the interview, you know, they looked at the resume like, oh, quantum physics, you surely you can figure it out. You're smart. You know, the classic assumption yep. that everything mm -hmm. will be fine. Mm -hmm. Just hang out with the devs, you know, go with the engineering team. They've got plenty of databases, plenty of data. <laughs> you tell us what data you want. It's all magic. You'll just figure it out. <laughs> You figured it out. So literally like that. And um, yeah, it was interesting. I built the basic systems that you need. Uh, we ended up then migrating them a couple of times over the course of 18 months, uh, then moved to another startup. And then COVID happened. I found myself with a bit of time and I thought, ah, the, what a disconnect between <laughs> data practitioners, data professionals and the business leaders. Yeah, uh, We need to do something about that. And so the, that's how the 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 seed of discovering data uh, was born and then slowly bit of water, <laughs> bit of sunlight, the plant grew and now we're still growing, still a long way to go, but yeah. uh, I see that gap narrowing uh, every day. Yeah, absolutely. And for the audience, you can, you can tell why Laura's and I are now talking because that's a lot of what I focus on too. So we have a lot in common. So Laura's, what is a data journalist and why should anyone look into doing that? They've been called a number of different ways. Data generalists, the data translators, mm -hmm. uh, data therapists. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the industry is yet to really condensate Oh, you it's know, terrible. Agree it's on one, <laughs> one, yeah. one word to describe it. But what it is, is like we're, lo we're looking for, I think, a missing ingredient in this big recipe. Um, and I think the missing ingredient is the ability to ask questions and, and follow your curiosity as a data professional and try to be uh, to empathize perhaps a little bit more with what's around you, with the many people that make up a business yeah. and build true, honest, genuine um, relationships with these people. Yeah. And the truth is that um, there is just no time of very <laughs> often to do that, or at least that's how we perceive it. Yeah. And um, and I think that's wrong. It's, uh, it's a mindset yeah. issue. And I think there is a way to start asking those questions and yeah. integrate that into sort of a daily habit that makes us data professionals, whether we're data engineers or data scientists, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the two polar opposites of the spectrum of the value chain, 
uh, more effective. So we don't just do work. Mm -hmm. We do work that has an impact that really yeah. helps people that depend on what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I love that. And the thing that, that I want to definitely get into um, in, in this talk too is there's been times that I've been called a generalist. Um, now I'm not, I would never call myself a generalist. Honestly, I have very, very unique skills um, with the knowledge graph stuff and the machine learning stuff that I do. But th I think that's half of the problem, right? Is when somebody hears generalist, they think that you're, you know, a jack of all trades, a master of none. And mm. that's not really the case, right? I think that what you're saying is when you do data science and, and correct me here if I'm wrong, you kind yeah. of have to know a little bit of like, oh, how do how does the whole ecosystem work together in a way? You don't need to know the the super depth of of an expert in every single one of those things. And you could be an expert in some of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like with with me, I, I would consider myself um pretty pretty skilled at, at certain things um and not others, but I can still talk about them. Uh, I think that is needed. I, I, I agree with you because that's how you make those connections and help those conversations. I think that's the most important thing in what you're saying. Those conversations are so critical and yet there's not a whole lot of people that can do them right now. I think you you hit the nail on the head. You know, the one of the biggest problems is that we perceive culturally, right? We have this history of talking about value add um, in the context of an expert that knows the answer to a problem mm -hmm. or that knows how to get that so the the, the answer to a question mm -hmm. in the shortest amount of time in the most effective way yes that is one way of value creation um, but that tends to work well when problems are relatively simple um and and linear in a way mm -hmm. so that you you can identify clear causes mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. do a root cause analysis in a relatively short amount of time yeah, you're not reinventing out. the wheel yeah yeah and and there aren't there aren't a big gazillion of interdependent variables that that all uh you know have an impact on the on the yeah. outcome that you're trying to yeah. understand um but the reality is that most most of the time that's not true <laughs> that's and not true right there's yeah. a billion of variables and yeah. the many influences and many people and many interests yeah. especially especially in data right and what what's what's different about data is that you know for those that might be listening to us now and thinking oh we'll be talking about collaboration and and coaching skills and leadership skills for like 40 years <laughs> what why are you now you know uh, back into this sort of stuff in data. Mm -hmm. And the answer is that data data really touches everyone in the organization, no matter yeah. where you are. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you think about the, the the typical path of a data team uh, now, starting today, mm -hmm. the first thing they would do, they would set up some version of the modern data stack. They would start yeah clicking buttons on some UI, <laughs> data will start flowing from a cloud into another cloud, it's all virtually magic. automated. <laughs> it's all magic. Okay. Um, and then and then at some point they start they start creating business logic on top of that data, yeah. right? And they start creating, you know, writing SQL and shaping the data in a way that makes sense based on their understanding of what the business does and in that particular moment in time. Mm -hmm. An understanding that might not be correct even a week later, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because things keep moving. Yeah. And so we have this, um, so how do you do it well? Well, I don't have the answer 100% on that, but I know how not to do it. And not to do it is, <laughs> is isolating yourself in a room called the data engineering room, yeah. doing your SQL, yeah. writing your tests, and never talking to the people that are consuming the stuff. Yeah. So now this is, you know, data mesh, data as a product. Mm -hmm. Those are those are great ideas, but it's not enough to just call it a product to make it useful. We oh, have to change sure. our own habits. Right, yeah, to, I know. And I love, I love that, that aspect too, because, you know, I do hear so many people talk about, you know, the data mesh or even the data fabric as a thing, not a culture shift. I mean, with the data mesh, you do get some of the culture shift co conversation going. But it's it's not a a two way street most of the time. It's we are going to figure out what you want, and then there's not that that 
reciprocal. Oh, but maybe you need to know what I do and why I'm doing what yeah. I'm doing. And I would say that, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefit for knowledge graph and in particularly ontologies for in this space where if you're that person that has to figure out how to model the conceptual thinking of how business works at your organization, you got to talk to somebody, right? And hmm. and those people are usually your, your business partners. And then you have to think, wow, do we actually have that data though? They're making a lot of assumptions on that side. So then you got to mm-hmm. go talk to all the, the data leaders, all of the architects, you know, all of those folks. And why wouldn't you then try to make sure that they have those conversations together. So that's that's why I am so passionate about this space too, is because it, it, it highly affects, you know, the knowledge graph space that I work in. Yeah, exactly. And so we go back full circle on the need of uh, um, another class, perhaps of yeah. data practitioners. And I'm sure that there are many out there. It's just that um, perhaps we are shamed. Or maybe we don't have a name or yeah. a name that we agree uh, upon uh, maybe that is the reason or maybe we are afraid that we won't be seen as valuable as the real yes. experts that yep. can specialize on one thing and so it's unambiguous which one is their strength you know that guy yep. or that gal is good with real-time yep. stuff she yep. can set up a kinesis cluster very quickly you know you can get it up and running with all your testing in three days because she spent 20 years refining her um you know cloud formation scripts and can spin up the architecture yeah. um in a, in a very short amount of time that is a very specialized person now yeah. can i rely on that person as a business to talk to people and bridge the gap between what's in the databases or in the kafka stream with mm-hmm. what's in the heads of people making decisions every day Probably not because that person is way too deep in the weeds. Exactly. So, yep. right. We need, we need to balance that. And we've got yeah. plenty of those people. We need yeah. them, but yeah. we need to sort of pair them with the other ones, the ones that are happy or they, yeah. they feel fulfillment and, and yeah. joy being exposed to many different business domains and yeah. being always the ones asking the stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I couldn't agree with you more on that because, you know, I think that first there is there is a little bit of a stigma where, um, you know, being a generalist, you know, is not as glamorous or is is valued. Um, and, and maybe that is where we work on the uh, messaging on what this this is. But I, I have been saying this for years um, and not on the channel. So surprise, here's a, some, something that, you, you know, the audience might not know. Um, every machine learning or AI team that I work on, they mm-hmm. are always struggling. Every single one of them is struggling because they are the magicians, right? Like I, I always joke, we were joking here that it's magic. Well, a lot of people still do kind of think it's magic. They're getting a little bit better with that business stakeholders and even engineering stakeholders because machine learning is not either of those things most of the time. Um, and so what I have found is the machine learning folks, they are building these models to, to do something. And if they don't have a very strong connection to the why and why is this important and why are we thinking of it this way, their models are always going to fall short. So for anyone mm-hmm. listening and you're wondering why your ML ops isn't working well or why you can never get any machine learning into production that actually is doing what you expect it to do, I'm not going to say this is a silver bullet, but I will tell you this is one of the biggest issues. <laughs> you don't have this data therapist, the, the the conduit between the machine learning team and the business because they do not talk the same language at all. You need someone to translate. Yeah, and I think like there's also an element um, of um, mindset and culture here. Yeah, that is um, that is changing, uh, but it's hard to explain. It's you can't put it on the sun, you know, like a dear friend of mine that says you can't put this stuff on a bus. Right. You can't write the <laughs> slogan that is so easy yeah. and catchy that people remember. The the thing that I, I, I hear a lot of is it's not necessarily, you know, the culture that's the problem. It's, well, we have legacy systems and they were all built and then they kind of morphed and it's. um 
it's like the I think it's called the Remington House in in the United uh-huh. States. I don't know if you know the that that house. If it's basically a house some some lady like just decided to build and build and build and build on. So there's like stairways that go nowhere. There's doors that don't lead to any. Like there's just why why does this why does any of that work? Um, that's kind of the systems that we all live in. <laughs> Right. Yeah, but you know, I should like the one way to start making uh, order in chaos is to own the fact that systems are messy yes. and be comfortable with yes. being the one not having the full picture about anything you're talking about. Yeah. And but we don't like to do that, right? We want to be the <laughs> ones that know yeah. things. Yeah. We like to be yeah. the experts. Yeah. And if we don't drop that mindset, mm-hmm. systems will never improve absolutely i mean (laughs) like as everything that you said i agree with but that i could point to any one problem that i've ever had as far as getting a project that has you know a lot of different teams a lot of different systems where was the breaking point and the breaking point has always been you know there is a group or an individual that is like well you know this is how it's always been done or it is well um it, it this works for me and i don't need to worry about what anybody else is 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 struggling with or you know this is um just the way that it is you don't understand um the complexity and it's like all of those are just excuses i think to 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 your point that but are they or 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 are you just worried that your supreme knowledge on this mess is being jeopardized right it's like that's a little bit of it a little bit of it (laughs) well yeah you have to drop uh the 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 shield and let everybody now see whatever whatever it's in those systems and most of the time it's not something to be proud of right Uh, right so how do you it takes bravery to do that honestly i mean yeah but I feel like, you know, if you've got a mortgage to pay and your company is the only employer out there, I understand. Look, like, I totally get it, right? Yeah. Now I have a mortgage to pay, you know, up until <laughs> three months ago, I didn't. So I know I know the feeling. Um, But if you can take that little bit of a risk mm-hmm. and I think you should jump on it, if anything, because of the learning opportunities that this can can give you, you know, I think about how much you can yeah. actually learn if you yeah. if you drop that shield. Yeah. You'll find things, you'll discover new angles of understanding the yeah. same thing. And I mean, no business owner, surely there are business owners that would fire people <laughs> for doing that. But you know, if you if you work in a modern organization that is competitive and wants to compete in the knowledge economy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure that they will appreciate you for being the one that did what nobody wanted to do, yeah. which which is look stupid and not knowledgeable in front of a whole bunch of people yeah. and be totally cool with that. Yeah. And lead the cultural yeah. change that way by by leading by leading by example, right? Mm-hmm. Showing to people, hey, it's okay not to know it because yeah. we are all discovering this which is kind of you know why i call the podcast discovering data because <laughs> it's yeah. it nobody has the full picture nobody yeah. ever will have the full answer about every about anything we yeah. all we, we if we combine our knowledge and our partially correct answers together maybe we can get to something you probably need somebody leading that effort Right, facilitating those conversations, you know, helping uh, the uh, concerted effort of all to to come together to to have that larger um, initiative, and that is still kind of getting figured out in many organizations. Loris, it has been fabulous having you on the channel. I am so excited to see um, how others react to to the video. So in closing remarks, um, yep. how would you suggest people getting a hold of you if they want to learn more about what you do? Yeah, sure. I'm uh, on virtually any thing that streams podcasts Mm -hmm. um type discovering data on google i'm sure you'll find plenty 
Um, the, the website is discoverdata.com uh, if you feel like typing. Otherwise, we are on um, the major podcast outlets, okay. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Alexa, um, anything that streams audio, uh, you'll find mm-hmm. us there. Uh, 